Hi everybody, welcome back to another Make It Monday video. This is Erin and today we're doing something different. I have this download for you on Nicole's blog and basically what you're going to do is you're going to fill it out and then rely on Lady Luck to decide what your card project is going to be. Let me show you. I've gone ahead and filled mine out. Here's the sheet and I'm using a die. That's where Lady Luck comes in. Now let's talk about the categories. The first one is horizontal or vertical and then there is six sketches, one for each side of the die, and then we have four categories. There is one for your main stamp set, and fill it out with the supplies that you have on hand, and make it challenging for yourself. Like I have a table service and quilter sampler as two of mine. Um, I have another column for stamps. This is sentiment stamps or supporting stamps, like a frame or a die cut combo. Fill those out. I have stuff like Floral Fusion number three, Think Big Favorites, Healing Touches, Framed Out number one. Next category is color combinations. And the last one is embellishments. I have like buttons, top notch twill, alphabet dies, buttons and twine, stuff like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and print this out if you're playing along and fill it out with your supplies and get yourself a die. And you're going to roll the die and it's going to choose what kind of card you're going to make. And I'm going to make my card <laughs> on the fly, on camera, with what Lady Luck gives me to work with. Okay, let's go ahead and roll. Fingers are crossed. What am I going to get? All right, I get a two. So that says it's a horizontal card on my sheet. Time for the sketches. Now you can always turn them sideways if you uh, roll horizontal. They're all vertical right now. Three is what I rolled. There you go. One with a bunch of circles on it. What's next? Four, which is half and half. Getting a little nervous because there's no main images on this. It's just kind of a supportive stamp to go with that sketch. It's uh, starting to get a little hairy. Roll it again. Six. Think big favorites, number six. And at this point, I don't even know what that looks like. I haven't looked and pulled my stamp sets yet. But I'm pretty nervous because there's no images on there either. Color combo is number one, which is soft blush, spring moss, scarlet jewel, and dark chocolate. And lastly, what are we going to get for embellishments? I hope it's something good because I don't have any main images on any of my stamps. Number three, and that's alphabet dyes. And I have to use alphabet dies with Think Big Favorites. That's going to be a little tough. So <laughs> I'll be honest with you. This is going to be a little nerve wracking. This is definitely challenging for me, but we'll see how well I do. I actually know how well I do because I've edited this already and it worked out pretty well. But at this point, it was very hairy. I didn't know. All right, so let's just go over what I have to use. Horizontal orientation, half and half stamp set, Think Big Favorite number six, Dark Chocolate, Scarlet Jewel, Soft Blush, Spring Moss, Alphabet Dyes. Now I have to use these, but the rule is you can add in other things as well, as long as you use those six if you're playing along. All right, so let's look at my sketch. I've gone ahead and turned it horizontal and pulled a couple elements. I decided to use a lot of the limit List layer circles, both the big and the small, and this is Think Big Favorites number six. Doesn't really look like it would work with that sketch, does it? But what we're going to do is we're going to do some selective inking and just use that think part, and we're going to put that up there above the U, so it's going to say thank you. And I'm using just a post it note, which is what I had handy, to cover up or mask off the bottom part of that sentiment. And I'm going to ink up just the thanks using a selective inking technique, which means I just don't stamp on the S at the end of the word. Very careful. Now, I only spent like five minutes going through my supplies before I came back on camera. I made a couple quick decisions, as you can see. But really, for the most part, you guys are seeing exactly my thought process as I make this card on camera. Because I don't have a... I usually do a card so you see it at the beginning and I remake it so I don't have a sample that I'm working off of this is all on the fly I felt like I needed to re-ink that thanks because I didn't get it covered well enough but trust me at this point I'm pretty scared because I have no idea how I'm gonna pull these elements together alright there we have a thank we're gonna go ahead and I cut 
the U out of bitty dot dark chocolate pack paper in the block alphabet. I'm just gonna tear it down. I found, I love ballpoint glue pens and I found these ones by Sakura on Amazon. Love these things if you guys are looking for something similar. Kind of is like you uh, commit to adhesive and then you're stuck with it for the rest of your life because you just can't get used to anything else. All right, I'm adjusting that O in the middle. I didn't feel like it was centered enough. Okay, so I have my circle element in the upper right-hand corner, just like on my sketch. And I have my lower one. And I also, using the smaller circle from Limitless Layers Circles, I die cut it out of spring moss and stamped a sentiment from half and half. So I got a check mark there for using half and half going to pull out some buttons in the colors because if you see on my sketch I have these circles that I kind of have to work with. I thought buttons would be a good substitute and remember as long as you use the six elements you have to use you can add in things and buttons wasn't on my list but I can add it in because I am covering my bum with everything else and I'm just messing around with colors and sizes kind of like the idea of putting a s button up there on the O because it's going to correspond with my sketch. I have that little circle there. So that kind of checks that mark for me. Now I spend an awful lot of time just moving buttons around and getting different buttons and so on and so forth. Very fussy, a lot of thinking time. I edited a lot of this out because a lot of it just was not productive. But like you, it's a lot of pushing things around, changing sizes. Look, I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, maybe a smaller soft blush circle button up there to give it a little more, more uh, dynamic element to it. But ultimately, I don't like that, but we'll see. Okay, at this point in my card making, I usually make <laughs> a mistake and I go off on a tangent and I do something that I don't like. So. It might happen here, I don't know. So I'm gonna get half and half out again. Even though I already used it, we're gonna put it to use again. One of these large elements, the plaid one. And using Scarlet Jewel ink, we're gonna add a little interest to the background. And with something large like this stamp, I, used, I like to pat it with a foam mat. Ink it up really well with Scarlet Jewel ink. Lots of inking. Especially on the videos, I want to make sure I don't have to do things again, so I almost overdo things to make sure it transfers well. Alright, so I'm going to put one vertical element for the one circle in the lower left hand. It's going to correspond with that and I'm going to do another one on the other side and you notice I don't really care about the one side of the stamp because it's going to get covered up with those circles on opposing corners. So we're going to put it back on our dark chocolate card base and we're going to get all our elements back and start pushing them around again. I tend to be a very frustrated stamper when things aren't going my way and I'll walk away for a good period of time but you know here on the camera all live I, I can't do that so uh, it's a bit difficult for me. I have some sending you flowers I cut those originally those are one of like the handful of things I pre-cut and decided on in that five minute period I was off camera and I think they're going to be well. And the reason why I did that was I knew without any major images on the two stamp sets I picked that I was going to have to use the elements I'm adding to act like images. So I have these flower images with the circles. Now I have all my leaves here and I decided I wanted to add a little texture so they're just not so flat. So we're going to stamp them with half and half, a different stamp from the set, the polka dot block. And I have them all lined up so I can do one stamping and cover most of them. I 
I just decided it needed a little more interest. And I can stamp them all but one at once. They didn't stamp on a couple of the edges of the leaves, but that's okay. We can uh, use them still, cover them up with other leaves. You'll see what I mean. Try not to sweat the small stuff like this. Everything can be used. And we're just going to get that one last leaf with the polka dots. We're going to bring it back to our card and start messing around again. Pushing, moving, trying to find that right balance. Now it's funny, I knew at this point that I did not like that background stamping I put there. But I'm trying to work with it. And it's funny because now, off camera, when I'm watching this video replaying, I'm like, you know, it's really not that bad. I could have done something with that. But in the heat of the moment, it wasn't working for me. But I keep trying. I keep trying to put those leaves on, push those buttons around. You know, honestly, I don't think it looks that bad right now. I should have gone with it. But I think that that blank area in the middle, it was kind of, it didn't visually, it didn't look right to me at the time. So how many of you push buttons around like this and elements and just, it's just constant until something gives and something clicks and then, you know, you move past it. And this, this can be frustrating. I get very frustrating. I decided since I'm working with these flowers, these are trying to look like flowers, why don't we try some stems with soft moss? cardstock. Again, looking back, doesn't look that bad. I don't know what I was fussed about. I do really like the final product, so I'm glad I uh, maybe vetoed this idea. Very frustrating. <laughs> like I said, just we're making it work, trying to make it work, trying to have some sort of breakthrough at this point. Normally I would walk away. But you know, I'm in the hot seat. I have to figure this out. Maybe if I switch them around. Yeah. They have to kind of go in opposing corners. Plus I have to follow my sketch, right? And at this point, I vetoed the background idea, flipped my piece of Scarlet Jewel over, and pushed my elements around again. But we will have a breakthrough here very soon. Thank goodness. There it is. Let's turn this one on the side a little bit and off the edge. I'm really liking that. It's a little more dynamic. It's more interesting to the eye. Yes, I like this, totally. This is a breakthrough. I could work with this. All right, what we need to do now is we need to maybe trim off that top and side of that circle to match the sketch because I can't just have a circle hanging over the edge of my card, right? I have to at some point commit so I'm going to go ahead and add my first adhesive, my first committing act. No, no, no going back here. And I'm going to start trimming off the edge. So there's a flat edge that corresponds with the card and nothing hangs over. Get a ruler, sharp edge, and go for it. Okay, and that's truer to my sketch. I still have that one circle element up there with the O and the U, the word U. All right, liking that. But now I have to do the same thing to the other side, right? Because we can't have anything hanging off. It's really important to me to make my cards mailable. So I try to keep them as flat as possible and nothing hanging off the edge unless I trim the card down in size to fit in the envelope. There we go. We have a right angle down there on that lower left hand circle. Now, 
all along. Every time I make a change, I'm moving the other elements around, just seeing how it looks. Buttons and circles and leaves. Okay, I think I kind of want to make that top circle match with the right angle. So let's go ahead and cut that and bring it back. Ah, but I have a bit of a problem. Do you see that little white edge up there in the corner? Can I cover it up with a button? Because I really don't have a lot of room to work with cutting away that element. Will a button work? Ugh, no. I'm going to have to cut some away. And it's going to be tricky because there's not a lot of cardstock to cut away without interfering with the sentiment. Let's see if I can pull it off. Just barely. Barely, barely, barely. Okay, I have right angles on both those elements. It's getting closer and closer to my original sketch. I've used all the elements that I need to use, which is great. And now it's just pulling it together there at the end. All right, I need something to move the eye across the card horizontally. So I got a uh, stamp from uh, Background Basics Textile. I'm gonna stamp that on the background right there in Scarlet Jewel. I like stamping the ink color on the cardstock color more than Versamark. It's, it's more of a contrast, I think. Really works well. Scarlet Jewel ink, once again. As you can see, it's coming together. Like, it's not as bleak as it was in the beginning. With, I don't know where I'm going to go with this. I don't know how to get all these elements in. I managed to get them in fairly quickly and early. It just goes to show you, this is really a focusing exercise. You have so many things, so many products, that when you're forced to use certain things, you know, you come up with great ideas, even if you are limited, almost better. I would have never done this on my own without rolling the dice and getting this card orientation and this combination of product. And I actually really like the card in the end. All right, we're putting everything together and I am about ready to commit. And as soon as I turn the camera off, for like two minutes I came up with like a couple additional great ideas so when we come back you'll see how I finished it off. You know this card is pretty good right now. But there's a couple other things. Okay this is the original sketch and here's my my final card. See I added a button there. I found this great flower button in my Scarlet Jewel pack and I put it over the O and it was big enough to c cover my die cut. In my sentiment I pulled out and I matted on a smaller limit lit layer circle, the scallops. Now if you look there is, we're using the rule of three quite a bit here. So let me show you where I've used that to help me pull this off in a short amount of time. There's Scarlet Jewel, three of those, three soft blushes, three spring mosses, and three dark chocolates between the sentiments and the ink and the pattern paper. Whew. I say I pulled it off. I am shocked. I don't know what you guys think. I uh, I hope you take the challenge. It is a lot of fun. A little nerve wracking at first as proven by endless button pushing. But when you focus, choose just a couple supplies and you're forced to on this, you come up with really great cards. And I actually am going to use this card. My best friend down the street needs a thank you for my birthday present. So this is going down to her. And when I started off, I didn't know that's what was going to end up. So I'm happy with it. Okay, I am so looking forward to seeing your take on this challenge. So go ahead, print out that sheet and post your creations on Nicole's blog. Talk to you soon.